finally arrived at the Sands Hotel, Narrabeen, New South Wales, and I'm pumped because tomorrow I'm going land-based fishing. I love this stuff. Off to bed early, because tomorrow I think I'm getting up before the sparrows. Well, I'm certain you can tell from my magnificent attire that today I'm going rock fishing, up nice and early and about to hook up with a couple of local gurus, Alex Bellissimo and his good friend Chris Neshi. They're going to show me a trick or two about fishing off the rocks in Narrabee, New South Wales. Come along for the journey. Fish here. Yeah. It's only. Uh... Here we go. Oh, it's a nice fish, mate. There we go. Beauty. They have bit so timidly. Yeah. I barely even felt the bite. I started winding up and then it took off. There you go. Yeah. That was that. Uh... That's a solid little fish. Yeah, it's not a bad little fish. Now that was on an unweighted bait. Yeah. I took it? the sinker weight off. Okay. Yeah. Good work, mate. There he is, there he's back, he's back. Got him. Small fish over. Oh no, he's alright. Hey! Done good well, work. Mate. Bit of prawn. Bit of prawn? Yeah, I just thought I'd try something different. Yeah, that's and great. Literally the tiniest piece of prawn, the size of your thumbnail. And it was out there for not very long at all. Oh look at that. How good is that? That is beautiful. Yeah. That is our little brim. Yellow fin brim. Yellow fin brim on a bit of prawn. As I said just a few minutes ago, the great thing about this is anyone can do it. And Brim have found that every state of Australia, they're a fantastic fish to target because they like being near structure. Rocks, beaches, piers, beautiful fish. I'm sure they get a little bit bigger too, so I'm gonna get my prawn back in the water. Here you go, mate. Morning, we're using prawns and pilchards for brim. And if you fish an area for five or ten minutes, the burly starts to get the fish going. You've got a much better chance of catching fish. If you haven't caught a fish within 20 minutes, move to the next spot because it could be that very first cast that does the job. Caught a few brim at the first location, but we were losing water very quickly. So Alex has suggested we come around the other side of the point. It's a bit flatter. We'll have water here for longer. And he says some of the brim here are absolute stonkers. Just heading up the rocks to get a bit more bait, and I thought I would show you how to rig a pilly tail for brim. Pillies are quite soft. But if you rig them properly, they work quite well. So you just slide the hook all the way through the back section there and pull the line all the way through. Get your hook and just simply put it into the bait and roll it around so it protrudes beautifully like that. You want plenty of hook exposed. Finish it off with a nice half itch. This is the key to holding soft baits on and hard baits at times. And then the sinker falls down on top of that. And that is the most beautifully presented bait that might last three or four casts. It's full of oil and to let the fish know there's something there worth eating. Nice fish, mate. Yeah, oh, that, uh, that brim just took that uh, pilly tail just in the white water on the edge there, just as we suspected. Yeah. So really Trying to wash this fish up now. Nice fish, mate. Here we go. Biggest one in the morning. See that lovely silver flash there in the morning sun? Beautiful, isn't it? So really excited to get this brim this morning. We've uh, had to move around quite a little bit. 
but eventually we found a couple of brim. I just said to Al, what if we cast this on the edge of the white water and, uh, yep, come up with the goods. Here we go, back out again. It's not a brim, but not a brim. Actually, uh, I'm completely wrong. <laughs> it is a brim. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's a good brim too. <laughs> Now, I'm fishing in probably less than a metre of water. The tide's now retreating, the fish are retreating as well, and the end result's this beautiful brim. The reason why I thought it wasn't a brim, it had a big chunk of weed around it, the weed fell off, and then I could feel the tail bead of the fish. So it actually muffled the uh, tail bead. I, I actually thought it was a dog shark. I just got snagged, which is going to happen a lot when you're rock fishing. And it's really important to carry all the gear with you to save you walking 100 metres back to where you've got all your stuff stored. So, on the belt here, a gimbal. I can rest my rod in it while I'm re-tying. Bait bucket, got pillies and prawns in there. So every time I re-bait, I don't have to take that walk. And this little bucket here, hooks and sinkers. So I can literally fish for hours without leaving the spot. And when you work on that theory that the best time to catch a fish is within 10 minutes of having caught a fish, this is a pretty good setup. Isn't it amazing, mate? The further we push out, the more fish we're getting. Yeah, absolutely. Paul, we've been uh, chasing the water all morning. We seem to be losing a lot of water this morning, but uh, yep, we're, we're getting the fish. And when Chris says losing a lot of water, this tide is rapidly disappearing. Moving off high and down to low, it's called the ebb as opposed to the flood. It's a nice brim, mate. Yep, just gonna try and wash it up now. What was that on? White water, just on a nice uh, head of filter. I tell you what, that could nearly be the fish of the day, mate. I was on the pilly head. On a pilly head there, man. Good work. And when it comes to filming rock fishing, I reckon it's just about as hard as it gets because we just can't get the crew in the water. But it's worth bringing these beautiful fish to the cameras so you can have a good look at them. I assume it's a yellow fin brim? Yeah, I guess it is. Good work, mate. Now that's going to be a very solid fish, isn't it? Absolutely, Paul. Really happy with that one. Mate, I might just grab him because he literally is just hanging on by the skin of his teeth. Now, I see you, oh, and and there he goes by the skin of his teeth. That's all right. Nice release, Paul. You went to two sinkers. What's the deal there? Yeah, just um, obviously increasing the weight incrementally. Um, so uh, Al's always giving me a bit of a tip. So at times you can just put a second weight on and um, yeah, it's the same as, as one. So I'm using one sinker. He's catching fish and I'm not. I think that's a handy tip, mate. You go back to fishing, I'll go back to the tackle box. I'm led to believe this could be a good plan. Good work. And isn't this a rocky little situation? Oh, absolutely. Oh, he's a nice oh, it's fish. Oh, good fish, isn't it? Just trying to negotiate there at the moment. I think we're getting through. What was it on? A little bit of prawn there, Paul. Prawn, beautiful. Good work. That's a really nice fish, mate. Yeah, nice fish. Oh, try and use this next wave to wash him up. Here we go. Oh, that's a good fish, mate. Lift him up. That is gold. Wow, well done. Just goes to show you a bit of a move. Straight away a fish. Mate, go and take your fish to the camera. We'll keep fishing. How's that sound? High five, Paul. Good work. Good work. So we've just moved over to this point. First cast with a little bit of prawn. Al just recommended to cast a little bit into that corner there into the white water and literally within seconds, bang, nice brim. 
Well, the perfect outfit for rock fishing for these smaller species like brim is this Shimano T-Curve Revolution 10 foot 6 two-piece spin rod. Ultralight tip, fast taper, you can cast an unweighted bait a long way and still stop some pretty big fish. The real one of my favourites in the Shimano stable, the Shimano X-Age 4000 FD. Great long cast pull, super smooth, and I've spooled it with 10 pound fins braid. It's doing the job just superbly. That was the smallest of bites. Yep. Looks like it might be a pig. Oh, there's some power there. I'll burly it up for you, mate. Oh, thanks very much. You know? You're a team player. <laughs> there you that go. That was cast right out in that white water. I like the burley's working. Yeah, the burley, what have we got there? <laughs> I say there's a good chance it's a pig. Yeah, yeah it's it is a, a pig. pig. That's a nice fish too. Yeah, yeah. Not a bad little fish. That's beautiful. Black drummer. Sensational fish. You often find them around these rocky ledges where you get lots of white water. A few breadcrumbs for burley. Bit of prawn for bait. I'll bring him over and show you this fish. They are called pigs because they are absolute pigs. They go hard and they taste sensational. Oh, Alex is on again. Got another little pig there, mate. Good work, mate. Because they pull hard, don't they? They pull very hard. I'll just get mine in the water. You know what that is, mate? That is a pigeon pair of pigs. What on hell? <laughs> Look at that, they're almost brothers from different mothers. They are. <laughs> That is awesome. This place, dare I say it, it rocks. What have we got here? Fish? Little pig. Oh, it's oh, a blue, blue fish. fish. It's a blue, blue fish. fish. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bring him in. Oh. This is unbelievable. I hope you get him, mate. These things are rare as rocking horse poo. There's not much pressure on here, Al. No, not at all, If you can mate. hold that for me. Oh, how many of these you seen in your time? Not very many. <laughs> the only time I've ever seen him is at Lord Howe Island. But if you swing him up, I'll dive on him. It's a blue fish. It's got to be a member of the blackfish family, doesn't it? I think it is, mate. Mate, if you want to swing him up. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I just want to play him out first, mate. Wow, we these they things, pull hard, don't they? They pull hard. You just don't ever see them. This is the first one I've ever seen in mainland Australia. How's the colour on me now? Alex Bellissimo, you are my hero. That <laughs> is a blue fish. Unbelievable. As I said, Lord how wild, they're prolific and there's a lot of them. But on mainland Australia, this is absolute gold. <laughs>